everyone, I'm Amelia. Today we are talking about your reins and everything to do with your reins as far as how to shorten your reins, how to hold your reins, how to keep your reins from slipping out of your hands. At the end, I'm gonna give you like a really special trick that I want you guys to try out. So let me know in the comments below if you have trouble with letting your reins get longer because I notice this happens a lot to my students where like they shorten up their reins and then all of a sudden the reins get longer and then I have to tell them to shorten their reins again. And it's important that you have, you wanna establish a steady contact with your horse so that you can control your horse. And it's really important that you hold your reins correctly, you use your reins correctly, and that you're aware of your rein length. Because when you're constantly changing the rein length and letting the reins get super long and then shortening them up and super long and shortening them up, then you're not able to establish a steady contact and have a nice connection with your horse. And that's gonna make it difficult to keep them round to turn them, um, just to really communicate with them. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is how to correctly hold the reins in your hand. So I'm going to turn sideways here. And when you hold the reins in your hand, you want to hold the reins so that they go come out between your ring finger and your pinky finger. And this is important because this allows a lot of sensitivity in your hand so that you can like do small movements with your wrist and your ring finger to supple your horse. So this is how you hold your reins. It's also really important that your thumb, that you make a rooftop shape with your thumb. So you can see how my thumb is bent here. And then with my thumb, I'm pushing down on my pointer finger to keep the reins from slipping. So that's super important that you have a little pressure there between your thumb and your pointer finger so that the reins don't slip out. Now, I used to ride like this with hitchhiker thumbs and that's incorrect because if you ride like this with hitchhiker thumbs, then um, it creates a lot of tension in your hand and your hand is really tight. So you're not able to properly supple. Like if you're just sitting, if you're watching this sitting at your computer, just try that. If, you're, if your thumbs are out like this, it's kind of impossible to supple your horse and that you'll feel a lot of tension in your forearm and your wrist. So you wanna have the rooftop shape with your thumb, your rein coming out between your pinky finger and your ring finger so that you can then supple your horse. Like if I'm here and I want to supple my horse, I'm going to see how I just sl slightly move the bit a little bit and he dropped his head nicely down in it. Let me just show you a little bit while I'm walking. If you like my videos, give this video a thumbs up if you've already learned something and be sure to subscribe so that you get notified when I make a new dressage video every Wednesday. My mission really is dressage for all and so it really helps me out when you guys comment on my videos, when you subscribe. Also check out in the description box. There's a lot of free resources that I have like a free rider position mini course, a free course on confidence. So I'm just so grateful to this community and to all of you guys for being here. Okay, so while I'm walking around here, I'm just focusing on my hand position. So I have that little rooftop shape with my thumb. I'm pointing down and pressing between my thumb and my pointer finger. And then because of this correct position, I'm able to just do a little bit of movement through my wrist. So when I want to supple my horse and get my horse to be a little bit rounder, what I do is that I use my inside leg to push my horse into the outside rein. And then with my inside wrist, I'm just kind of bending and moving my fingers on the inside rein to get him to supple. So you can see like, for example, if his head's up, First thing I do is I give him a little kick with my inside leg, move him into my outside rein, and then with the fingers on the inside rein, I'm doing a scrambling eggs motion. So you know how like when you're scrambling eggs in the morning, you're holding the bowl in one hand and with the other hand, you're whisking your eggs. It's a little bit that motion to supple your horse. So if I'm gonna supple him, I'm thinking like a little wiggle, wiggle, soft. Wiggle, wiggle, soft. You don't wanna be scrambling eggs constantly because that's just gonna annoy your horse, but you wanna just supple, supple, soft, supple, supple, soft. Now, 
if I want to shorten my range, so if I'm like going, let's say from a free walk, which is a walk on a loose or a long rein, and I'm going to shorten up my reins. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I always shorten my inside rein first. So what you have to do is that one rein has to help the other. So I'm going to put both my reins in my outside hand here. I'm going to then slide down my inside rein and take contact. Now I need to shorten the outside rein. So I'm going to put both reins in my inside hand and slide down the outside hand. So you need to do a lot of practicing lengthening and shortening your reins until it becomes really, really natural. So I'll do that again. I'll just like let the reins out, let them go to the free walk. And then I'm going to, to shorten up the reins, put both reins in my outside hand, slide down the inside, put both reins in the inside hand, slide down the outside. So notice that when I shortened up my reins, I didn't change my seat or my position. This is what I see happening a lot of times is people go and they're like on the loose rein, right? And they're gonna shorten their reins up. And like people will literally like do this, like they'll like lean forward and go like this to get their rein short. So that's like really a bad thing to do. It's really important that you keep your seat and your legs connected because Remember that rhythm is the base of the training scale. And so I'm really mindful of my horse's walk rhythm and the tempo. And if I shorten up my reins, I'm going to do it like little by little there so that now I've got my reins shorter and he's walking on the contact. So it's really important that you have control over your rein length, that you have this correct hand position so that, um, you can get your horse on the bit, you can steer your horse, you can have control of your horse. Don't do that. And you could see there, he was just a little bit pulling on me. So I, again, I just kind of moving the bit until he gets soft. Good boy. So um, I, I do a lot of like online trainings with students. And so I have this one online student. She said that she went to a clinic and she struggles with keeping her hands closed and her rein short and the instructor had her ride with little rocks in her hands so i have here in my pocket i found a few little rocks in the in the dirt on the way up to the arena and i'm going to give this a try so basically i just have like two little small um, rocks she said not, that you don't want them to be too big and i'm going to hold these in the palm of my hands while i ride around so I'm going to let you know my experience with this. I think that the the reason that this is a good thing to play around with is because for one, it's just that awareness. Like if you are someone that all the time your your reins end up sliding out of your hands, think about kind of you don't want to be like gripping these rocks to death. But basically, my pinky finger is keeping them from falling out of my hand. And I'm just going to see here what I'm feeling. So definitely I'm feeling more awareness that, you know, I'm keeping a steady contact. I'm keeping my rein short. And then I'm just kind of able to still supple. So that's the main thing is you, even if you're like holding these little rocks, you still want to feel like you're able to move your wrist and ring finger and supple a little bit your horse. Um, but yeah, give this a try. Maybe try if you have trouble with the rain slipping, try this holding the rocks in your hands and still you want to make sure that you have that um, correct position with a little bit of a bend in your thumb that you're still able to move your wrist and ring finger and keep your horse supple in the contact. So it's definitely like an interesting feel to try to ride and have these rocks in my hand um, but again just anything that you can do to kind of bring awareness to your hands and to keeping a little bit of a steadier contact will go a long way to communicating better with your horse to getting your horse a little bit rounder and Another thing that I didn't mention before that I should have mentioned is that you always want to have a straight line from your elbow to your horse's mouth. So 
Um, like when I'm riding here, you can see there's a straight line from my elbow to my horse's mouth. If your hands are like this, locked out, and that's gonna make your arms really stiff. You can see how there's no longer a straight line from my elbow to the horse's mouth. And you also don't wanna have your hands too high. Again, that creates a broken line. So, good boy, Fargo. Good boy. So give this a try. Try holding some little rocks in your hands if you have trouble with your rain slipping out. And let me know in the comments below if this video was helpful uh, or if there's any other tips that you'd like to share with our community to help keep your rain short and hold your range properly. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.